This epi's really expensive. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose Guitar Information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. Let's go ahead and see what's up with these new Epiphone Firebirds. Are they worth the $16.99 price tag? <laughs> So first off, this is a pretty cool case, right? It's ultra chunky, super plush, like more plush than I was expecting. Like it's that hard, rigid foam around here. But look at that, we've got the banjo tuners on an Epiphone. So that's why your case has to be extra deep. Those are real pearl inlays. That's kind of strange to see on a Firebird, but a nice touch for our price. We're supposed to have the Gibson Electronics in here. It's got the fancy Vibrola. Let's see how it feels. All right. It's got the kind of big, really chunky neck. Ah, I hate to say it, but it does feel really, really good. Because look, even your headstock is correct. It's got the raised portion. It's just these are being offered in the custom colors, so they don't do the painted black area. And I'd say it's a fairly reasonable weight, and it is proper neck through construction. So let's talk about these new Firebirds. Back in 2020, they came out with these new models. They were all in that $400 to $800-ish dollar price range. And the new Firebirds at that time were $599. Incredibly cool for the price. They were true neck through construction, but they just had the Epiphone pickups. They didn't have the exact same headstock or the correct tuners. They were just a nice tribute. So for 2024, they decided to revamp that model and offer their new inspired by Gibson custom shop version. They're trying to do 63 reissue style Firebirds. They're offering them in the Firebird 1 and the Firebird 5. The 1 means it has one pickup and you get slightly less ornamentation to them, no Vibrola, and they offer them in the Heather Poly finish, Silver Mist, and the Inverness Green for $1,299. The one we're documenting today, the Firebird 5, is $1,699. They're being offered in Frost Blue and Ember Red, and they're fully ornamentated. Now you might say, hey, didn't you just say these were like 600 bucks? Well, that's when you have to take into account You've got the correct tuners and the correct headstock, probably worth between three and four hundred dollars of an upcharge. You've got the CTS pots, so we can give them 50 bucks for that. You've got the correct Gibson Firebird pickups that are Alnico 5. You could probably budget an extra 250 to swap that out. We've got the hard case, that's 150 bucks, and the Vibrola, maybe about the same. So, I mean, if you do the math and account for inflation, yes, the math surprisingly adds up. However, I can see why a lot of people would not necessarily care about each each and every aspect that they've changed. So it seems this will appeal to a very certain demographic. However, I think there's going to be a lot of backlash <laughs> for Epiphones at this price point. Maybe it'll be worth it as Epiphone slowly becomes a premium import model brand. And they also revamped the Thunderbirds. We now have an Epiphone version of the Rex Brown being offered at $1,299. And then surprisingly, some more affordable ones. $849 for the 64 style T-Bird, offered in Ember Red, Silver Mist, Inverness Green, and then a standard T-Bird 60s and Tobacco Sunburst at $749. This is one of those times where the bases definitely feel like a better value, but remember, they don't have the USA Electronics. It's kind of like the old version of the Epiphone that you could get. The first impressions, I mean, if I picked this off the wall at a Guitar Center and saw all the price tag, I would probably just put it back. But somebody actually knew Guitar Day this one. I technically don't have any money into this, so we can get as unbiased as possible. The neck profile, I think, is the biggest difference as compared to the previous Epiphone version. This is quite large and chunky. I like what they've done here. I've reviewed the Johnny Winter Firebirds out of the Gibson Custom Shop, and that's what I always loved about those. I was kind of expecting this to be a more striking red, like really in your face, but in person, it's kind of a dull red color is the best way to put it. Think like aged ketchup. <laughs> Certainly not a cherry color. So everybody say thank you Sterling for sharing your new guitar with us as we throw it onto the workbench to verify its parts and specs. Let's play a game with this. Let's spot the differences between this and a Gibson version. Because say somebody replaces this for one that says Gibson, you swap your truss rod cover too, how would you know this wasn't a Gibson? So we'll start our journey with the pickups. This is one of those parts where Epiphone still hasn't matched what Gibson uses as far as the pickup rings, but since this is actually the Firebird pickups around, it's very close. Usually the humbucker rings are just a lot wider. I don't personally see a huge difference on these. And sure enough, it says rhythm reissue Firebird pickup on the back. That is a Gibson product. Same thing is true for the bridge pickup. As far as the readings within the circuit, the middle for fun is 3.46, but our main positions 6.85 in the bridge and 6.99 in the neck. 
Epiphones tend to have a small piece of painter's tape right here, and then they have a code right there. You wouldn't normally find that in a Gibson, but we can see through to our multiply neck through construction right there. So that's mahogany and walnut stripes, nine pieces. We can see that a little bit more clearly in our bridge pickup cavity as well. But here's a very Epiphone thing. They always have these QR codes on the inside. However, they're not under the finish. They just get sprayed over. So somebody could remove that. Now let's take a look under the hood of the Firebird. Here's a big difference, at least from the Gibson Firebirds that I've torn apart. This big rounded triangular shape here, that's not how Gibson does it. Theirs is more of a straight line. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. So that's one thing you could also look for, but trust me, there's a way bigger tell before you would ever need to get there. We're just kind of doing this for fun. You can see our Switchcraft three-way toggle, as well as all the other pickup wires going on in there. And as far as our controls, regular stuff, volume and tone for each pickup, output jack on the front. They actually put a bridge on here that mimics the Gibson ABR-1. Here it is side by side to a 70s one. You can tell it's like a little bit wider, but not by much. Certainly a far cry from the typical Loctone series. You still have these slotted screws, which a Gibson would not have. But again, you could probably replace those. But it is not mounted historically. There's still a bushing within the body. Kind of hard to see that from stock photos. Here's a closer look at that bridge though. It reads B2 on the back. That's a dead giveaway. It's not a Gibson APR one. Now let's take a look at our tremolo. I'm pretty confident the true Gibson version underneath the hood here utilizes two larger screws, whereas these have the tiny ones. But that's how that gets mounted to the guitar, six screws on the underside. And then this is just a fancy decorative plate that goes on top of that for aesthetic reasons. It just has two screws over here and two on the other side to secure it and make it look fancy. The ball end of the string just clips on there and then you're bending the metal and hoping it goes back in two. Best used for light warbles rather than super dive bombs, but it all depends, you know, do you have roller saddles? Is your nut cut properly? All that good stuff. So in case you don't understand what neck through means, the whole neck goes through the body. So this is still technically the neck. They have the pickups within the neck, but then they join these mahogany wings to the side of it. Usually there's like a triangular cut in that they join them to, but unfortunately we can't see that on a solid finish. So it's a nine piece walnut mahogany neck with mahogany wings. However, there are limited edition ones where they do maple wings or zebra wood even within the Guitar of the Week series. But moving on from there, we can talk about our fretboard, which is Indian Laurel. There's two main things here that tip this off as the Epiphone version. We've got the real mother of pearl inlays. We had talked about that earlier. You don't even get that on the Gibson Custom Shop because it's not historically accurate. However, I love that Epiphone is doing this because they're getting really expensive. You might as well have a little bit of an it factor. Typically, you'd only get real pearl on the Firebird 7s because those are dressed up like a Les Paul Custom and they get the block inlays. But do note, we do not have any fret nibs on on here. A real Gibson can be fret nibless. It depends on your production. It also depends if it's been refretted, among other things. As far as tooling marks go, this is actually pretty nice. Maybe the edges of the frets could have been, you know, rounded off just a little bit better, but they're not bad by any means. I measure a 1.71 inch nut, increasing to 2.08 at the 12th. First fret neck depth 0.84. Wow, that gets chunky. 1.02 by the 12th. Regular 24 3 quarter inch scale, 12 inch fretboard radius. Here's a look at that neck at the first fret and the 12th fret. Gets nice and wide, but stays a C shape. This right here is your biggest tell. This is what you should check first if you're suspicious that somebody has dressed up an Epiphone. Pop the truss rod cover, because this part is real easy to replace for one that says Gibson. But if you have a truss rod that looks like this, that's recessed into the neck and utilizes an Allen wrench, yeah, that's an Epiphone. A Gibson will only use the hex wrench and it'll be sticking out the top. Well, let's take a second to appreciate this headstock. You're paying quite a premium to have it and the proper banjo style tuners. So you get the cool raised section. I mean, if you're a Firebird purist, you're happy that this is here. But I was kind of scared how these would feel with the Epiphone branding because I didn't know what brand tuners they were actually going to use. I will say they are rather stiff feeling, but they're very precise tuners. So that's either a good or a bad thing. Moving on to the backside now, you've got a little bit of a comfort carve right there. And once again, it is a raised section because that's the neck joining onto our mahogany wings. Here's a look at our neck joints, that flat backed one. That's era correct to this particular year that they're going for. Got a strap button right here. Oh, and 
right there. You actually have the option. I've never seen that stock. It's kind of cool. But the other one's down here. And the pots are part of their marketing material. It's the 500k CTS, but honestly, most Epiphones have that nowadays. And this doesn't look all that different from the standard wiring. But moving up the back side of the neck, not too much to talk about till we get here. With our Made in China sticker, the whole setup thing, and the back side of our planetary tuners. But I did find this interesting. They went back to the IGC logo, which stands for Inspired by Gibson Custom. It doesn't seem like they know how they want to do these yet, because it seems every single one has a different serialization. Personally, I like the one we looked at last time, where it's just this whole double diamond thing engraved into the headstock like the serial number. But I bet they were thinking, well, we've got this. Why would we want to double brand it? All said and done though, it weighs eight pounds, about 10 ounces. So let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how the new Epiphone sounds. First off, neck dive test. The one on the shoulder here. Yeah, that's pretty bad. So I'm really happy that they actually gave you like the vintage correct one and this one. Because believe it or not, it does balance perfectly at the base of the neck right there. But now let's dive into these tones. <laughs> Certainly has that firebird chime. Man, that bridge has got a lot of spank to it. Comparison's sake, let's see on a 90s Firebird. <laughs> So that was an interesting experience. I honestly didn't really like this guitar that much until I compared it to one of my other 90s Firebirds. Now, 
I don't really like the 90s Firebirds for the specs that they gave them, but I love the cool custom colors, so that's why I collect them. But I thought the newer Firebird pickups sounded better. They have the nice punchy attack to them. They're still bright and clear. I mean, maybe the other ones are a little bit more bright. It just kind of depends what you're going for. But this is definitely more of a actual custom shop recreation of the specs that you can only get out of the custom shop as far as that big chunky neck profile goes. And we've already talked about the headstock enough here. At first, I wasn't really liking how stiff those tuners are to move, but they are very precise. Trying that 90s bird out again. Yeah, those things didn't really stand the test of time. They're hard to get them to stay in tune. <laughs> It's a very niche item. If you've always wanted a custom shop reissue Firebird, but you can't afford the 6,000 plus price tag, but you could maybe get to about 2,000 after tax. Yes, this does make sense. They definitely packed as much as they could in here. And I think this might be a test. Are people willing to pay this much for an Epiphone if it's highly specced out? For the average Joe, I would just say go for the regular one. If they're even still in production, I'm not entirely too sure. But I remember really loving that last Epiphone. But all right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed this review. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.